As we approach Election Day, here's one thing that has become patently obvious. Democrats are uninterested in the things Americans care about most, their prosperity and their safety. Instead of policy prescriptions, Democrats poison American discourse with constant demonization and perpetual intimidation. And in the Kavanaugh saga, we saw that they're masters at producing coordinated, choreographed outrage. After that backfire, Democrats began to panic. Although still favored to take the House of Representatives, things began to shift somewhat after the Kavanaugh dust settled. Stories suddenly began to pop up that Pelosi and Schumer and company were concerned that Latino voters weren't sufficiently enthusiastic in the midterms, which, of course, could doom Democrat chances to take the House. Then, like magic, a few days later, a story appeared out of nowhere about another caravan of Central Americans headed to the U.S. from Honduras. No lo puede detener. Solo Dios no puede detener. Donald Trump no es nadie. Solo porque sea presidente de Estados Unidos no lo puede detener. La situación es bien dura aquí porque no hay trabajo. No hay trabajo y necesitamos trabajo. A former Honduran left-wing politician even joined the caravan for a time before he was arrested. So what started as a group of 1,600 soon became 2,000 and then 4,000 and apparently growing. Meanwhile, crusading reporters are feeding the narrative that anyone opposed to welcoming these caravanners into our country are cruel, horrible, awful, rotten people. So what is the GOP strategy? We see it at this point as to push fear and loathing. If you don't vote, the scary people from the South are coming for you. And you see that picture? That's what they want you to think all immigrants look like. People laying on the floor, splayed out, not as civilized as you, different from you. The media's over-the-top slurs against those of us who believe that the system must change and that our border has to be protected, it speaks volumes about their bias and their real motivation. Of course, which is to help Democrats like presidential hopeful Julian Castro. The president continues to fear monger around the issue of immigration. One of the worst things that's happened in these last 18 months has been uh, the basically state sponsored, state sponsored child abuse of young kids at the border. This example today of, of what he says is a caravan, uh, you know, he's picking that and he's trying to make an issue of it. To gin up his base, um, I think that the American people can see through that. You know what the American people see through? Democrats' phony compassion, politically timed, in a desperate attempt to turn out Latino voters who themselves are seeing the wonders of the Trump economy, record low unemployment, and the best economy in decades. Now, Castro was mayor of San Antonio, and his twin brother, Joaquin, he represents San Antonio in Congress. I've never seen either of them on television standing for the families of those brutally murdered by illegal aliens, brutally, brutally hurt by rape, spousal abuse, child abuse, and as I said, even murder. Today, crime scene tape, boarded up doors and broken glass are still outside this apartment on Jones Maltzberger Road. It was here just yesterday where firefighters found a badly burned body. Police arrested and charged 20-year-old Ernesto Esquivel Garcia with murder, arson, and abuse of a corpse. News for San Antonio has learned U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement is now a part of this investigation. Now, ICE was apparently involved from the very beginning in this story, even before the gruesome murder. Now, back in 2017, Garcia was arrested for a DWI and a misdemeanor criminal mischief after he reportedly rammed his truck into the cars of an ex-girlfriend and her family members. He got an immigration judge, though, to give him a voluntary departure order. Now, would you be surprised to hear that he didn't leave the country voluntarily after that order? A few months later, he was in ICE custody a second time. And a second time, he was given a voluntary departure order. And now, in just 11 days, he awaits his trial for the murder of Jared Vargas. And why aren't any of the Democrats who rail against family separations also railing about stories like this? 55 illegal immigrants found stuffed in a truck ready to be shipped across the United States, undoubtedly many to unscrupulous employers. 
Our open borders, as well as our immigration and asylum loopholes, are enriching the cartels, they're endangering migrants, and they're also making life worse for most Americans beyond the super rich who live in a protected bubble. So how can we allow this to continue and still be a country? Now, of course, not all illegal immigrants commit violent crime, and many are good and hardworking people. But that's not really the point. No American should suffer or be brutalized in order to fulfill the Democrats' fantasy of a borderless society. No American worker should see his or her wages go down because there's an illegal immigrant who just arrived in the U.S. who's willing to work for 40 percent less. In Donald Trump, we finally have a president who wants to tackle this problem, not just pass it on to the next president the way Obama did. And don't buy for a moment what the left is selling you. Democrats are the ones using this and stoking false fear among the Latinos to try to flip Congress. Again, no ideas, just more emotional manipulation. We welcome and we treasure the Hispanic immigrants in this country who came here the legal way, like Tia from Venezuela, who called into my radio show today. I was born in Venezuela. I am a proud American citizen now, but I am terrified of what is happening. My mother would have never thought that Venezuela, 30 years later, was going to be a socialist country. And then five, eight years after that, was going to descend into a dictatorship. Because once they get in, they change the Constitution, and now they're not even waiting. They want the Supreme Court because they want to change the Constitution, and there goes our country. There goes our country. We get a lot of those calls on the radio, legal immigrants enraged. Now, we all know the negative changes that open borders and catch and release bring to America. Look no further than to California's rampant homelessness, filthy streets, ballooning welfare programs, crushing regulations. That's what a Democrat supermajority sanctuary state ends up looking like. The president is standing up for you. He wants this to stop. And this morning he tweeted, we spend billions enforcing other countries' borders as our own has become a joke. Our laws ignored and our generation and compass compassion exploited. And he said it as well. He said, in addition to stopping all payments to these countries, which seem to have almost no control over their population, I must, in the strongest of terms, ask Me Mexico to stop this onslaught. And if they're unable to do so, I will call up the U.S. military and close our southern border. That's what his tweet said. Now, the Democrats talk, taking the House will ensure that this caravan of 4,000 eventually becomes a flow of 4 million, 4 million plus, before we know it. This cannot happen. But as we told you last night, if you're still on the fence about what to do on November 6th in the midterm election, just think for a moment about who's in line to chair the important committees when it comes to these issues, like Homeland Security and the Judiciary Committees, if the Democrats do take the House. Benny Thompson from Mississippi would take Homeland Security. You would think the most important Homeland Security problem facing the nation is a handful of Central Americans moving through Mexico. That does not make it so. Better to distract the American people from the real issues facing the department and perhaps from the president's own problems, too. Oh, and meanwhile, Jerry Nadler would oversee judiciary, which includes immigration and border security. And we know he's far more interested in investigating Justice Kavanaugh than solving our border problem. Come on. Hispanic Americans are smart enough to spot a con when they see one. So I say it's time to walk away from the Democrats' cynical game of identity politics and emotional manipulation and toward candidates whose policies result in higher wages and better security for all Americans. And that's the angle.